I'm not sure where we're headed, but they do give you a map. A map here. They give you a map of the museum. It so shows you. You can take a look all the things that they have to offer. You know, by numbers, you got all the pictures with the numbers, and then the numbers here to explain to you what everything is. Hello everyone, and welcome to Space for Three. Today we're in the city of Naples, and we are gonna do museum number two. Number two. From the Collier Museum series that we're doing, which is five museums, three cities. Three cities. So come along, we got plenty of space. And they got a big old army tank. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna check that out too. And here is... The man. Baron Collier himself. Look at him, looking all spiffy. Looking all spiffy, looking like Sherlock Holmes. Put a pipe in his hand. <laughs> and you're looking like Sherlock, like Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Hey, Shirley. Collier County is named after him. It's named after that guy. Martha over at the Museum of the Everglades in Everglades City. She does a walking tour and she gets into a deep explanation of all the landmarks and how important this man was to Collier County. Basically, he connected, he built the Tamiami Trail, which connected Tampa to Miami. So check the link below or check the cards and we're gonna add that for you guys. It's an awesome tour. Make sure you check it out. La Florida. So these are the conquistadores, which were Spanish soldiers who volunteered to carry out the takeover of La Florida. This was near 1500s. Juan Ponce de Leon, right here. Here we have an interactive part of the museum. You can see here, you just flip these around. You got a description here. That's this one, US Army button. You have a picture of what it will look like on the actual clothing. And then the actual artifact of the buttons. All right, so we're coming outside to the back. To the back part of the museum right now. And we're gonna go check out some stuff, some really cool stuff that they got back here. Yeah, this museum's pretty cool. I believe they have five acres worth of different things like a train and an army tank and and i think they even got a swamp buggy yeah even a swamp buggy so <laughs> come and check this out look at that really cool as soon as you come outside bam there it is the bowen locomotive philadelphia usa take a look at that the deuce Built by Baldwin Steam Locomotive Works in Philadelphia sometimes between 1914 and 1920. Engine number two spent most of its, inact its, of its active career on logging railroads in Florida's Pines and Cypress Forest. It was the smallest of five coal-burning locomotives used by the Lee Tidewater Cypress Company based in Copeland from 1944 on the engine was used as a labor train carrying logging crews deep into the Fagatashi and Big Cypress Swamp. The train left Copeland at about 5.15 every morning, Monday through Saturday. Choo -choo. We're about to board. Doing it. <laughs> here we are. Wow. We made it all aboard. <laughs> this is neat. So here you got the engine room. That's a big engine there. They want to put yeah, coal in there the or? Because it was a steam train. We're making our way towards the back of the locomotive. So here we are at the back side. I'm going to pan it around so that you see. All of this is all part of the museum. So there's a lot to see when you come here. Make sure you have plenty of time because it's going to take you a couple of hours to see everything they have to offer. We just came out of this building right over there and now we're here at the train. <sighs> Alright. You 
you follow the brick road until you get to your next destination. So it's pretty cool. Put on them shades because that sun is kicking. This boat was mostly made to provide transportation for guests and supplies to the Key Widen Island. So we just saw the cocoa mist and now we're gonna continue on the journey. We so, got a few more things to check out. Yeah, it's a pretty big place. Yeah. Check out this little trail. They're doing a pretty good job maintaining it. Here you got a little bridge. You got some swamp to the right. And as you can see, we were over there. By the boat then you got some more water on this side and then that building right there is the main entrance to the museum but just keep in mind it's multiples so you get to see a lot of things we're not even halfway yet so we just did this bridge because we're heading towards our next destination. This is that little house right there. That is the Naples Cottage. And that's the Naples Cottage. Next. This place was actually rescued from demolition in 1990. They were going to demolish it. Thank God they didn't. It's a cute little cottage house. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we are in the inside of the Naples cottage. As soon as you walk in, you're welcomed by a piano. A beautiful piano. Then. You got your stairs. But unfortunately, we don't have access to the upstairs. Nope, it's locked. Okay, so we are inside this beautiful little cottage. And what is so special about this is that it was built in 1926. And for the time period, it is considered a very modern cottage because it had electricity, it had an indoor kitchen, and it had plumbing, which houses in that time did not have. So this was considered a very modern cottage. This family was living it up. They were pimping it back then. So this is like just a hangout room right here. You have your chandelier. You did your ballroom dancing. Da, 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 da. I don't know what they did here, but this is your kitchen. Here's the refrigerator. Let's take a look inside. Baking soda. I got baking soda. Butter boy popcorn, some tobacco, salt and pepper. See these people, these people were doing it big back then. They had hot and cold water. They had both. And here you put your dishes to dry. <laughs> this is mm -hmm. really neat. They had an oven. And then they had Four burners? Four burners. I'm not sure what this was, but this lifts up and That's the grill. like a grill. Smoker. A smoker of some sort. Take a look at how you adjust the temperature. 500 degrees, 400, 450, 400, 350. Thanks for not sitting on the furniture. So, you're welcome to come. But don't you sit on that furniture. I think this is interactive. Let's check this out. Oh. They lied. It's an Edison I wish it record worked. player. I believe it's an Edison record player or radio. You have to crank it up. I have no idea how this worked. 
But it looks cool. So that's the end of the tour of the cottage. Yes, sir. So we're back on the trail. See where it leads us to now. So we just left that little cottage right there. Got back on the trail. And what the what? I see an army tank. We got a US medium tank M4 Sherman. Take a look at that baby. Woo wee. Used in World War II. So all that green stuff that you see is actually water. Do not come out here thinking you're gonna walk through there because you ain't. You're gonna sink, you're gonna get a by an alligator. <laughs> yep. You gotta have these in the Everglades. Swamp buggy. And they cute. Look at them. Look at them smiling at y'all. Say hi. So here in front of us we have a Seminole War Fort display. So when you went to war against the Seminoles, this is how they were posted up. Boom! Cannon. Fire in the hole. We're inside the fort right now. Let's go up. So here we are in the fort. When you come to see the fort exhibit, the Seminole Fort exhibit, you could actually walk on a boardwalk that they created for you. And check out this view. The actual museum is so big, I believe it's five acres. I'm not sure, but I believe it's five acres of land. So they actually give you a map. So if you get around, they know exactly where you're at and what everything is. So here we are with the Seminole camp. See, we just walked down the trail and we arrived here at the camp. This is where they used to camp out. This is how they used to camp out. This is their crib, the way they lived. We're inside the Chico. This area here, they have it like a little village. So when you walk around, see, this right here is the outside. So that would be the ceiling and it's totally it's totally waterproof it goes all the way down to the ground and windproof it could sustain hurricane winds this shiki right here passed inspection so you walk around the woods and here's another one with a platform and then there's another one so as you see here they kept it elevated to protect them from snakes and any other kind of water. In case the water, water rise, they were up high. And also the Florida snakes, which include rattles, rattlesnakes. Yep, that's what it looks like. So we're actually inside of a little Seminole village. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And that's the one we just came out of. So now we're heading this way. And this looks like a fire pit. I think this was where they grubbed. It's going down right here. So this must have been some kind of storage or a horse stable. Could have been a horse stable. I don't see any information on it, but I believe it might have been a horse stable or some kind of cottage, maybe. I'm not sure, but over here, they have a fire pit. There you go. That was your fire pit. And here, you got the sugar cane press. We showed you one of these at Robert's Museum, but this is another kind. They would put the sugar cane in there and they'll have like you see this long pole right here they would have a mule tied to it or a small tractor or something that would spin this around but you see this would actually spin around
And that's how they would be able to. That's how they would grind it. Grind it down. As far as it goes, that way. Look at them work. And that's how the sugar cane will get grinded up in there. Manpower. To think that they would put a mule to do this or sometimes they would use a small tractor but most of the time it was an animal that did this labor. <laughs> and here, boom! Look at that. Did y'all see that? <laughs> this is all Earl Baum's work right in here. This is his trophy room. All kinds of fish and all kinds of birds, squirrels. This is what happens in the flood of Everglades. Wow, those are rattlesnake hides. Mm -hmm. I thought they were something bigger. Rattlesnakes, believe it or not, in Florida. And they got a sawfish. Those are saws over there on the corner. They got a, he has a turtle head. And then you'll see some saws. Those saws are from the sawfish. There's an actual sawfish right next to it. And then you got snake hides, hides. And those are diamondback rattlesnakes. That's no joke. And those are really big. Loggerhead turtle. That one's huge. So when you come here, it is five acres. There's three yes. enough five acres of property. So you're gonna see different things. There's multiple things to do, multiple exhibits. They have an army tank, they have a train, they have a little village of the Seminoles. You'll see in the video, all those different things. It might not translate well on film. It might seem like we just went from one place to the other, but it's quite a little walk. It's You're gonna spend at least an hour, a good hour if you wanna take your time and really take everything in. I would say an hour and a half to two mm -hmm. hours, maybe. If you just wanna rush it through, you could also do that. But I would recommend at least prepare for an hour or more to get the whole feel of the entire museum. Yes. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome place. Highly encourage people to come out here. You won't be disappointed, it's free and you get a lot of information. There's some interactive stuff. You really have a good time. It's very family friendly. Bring your kids, bring your grandparents, bring your mom and them. It's all good. <laughs> They're gonna love it. Everybody will love it here. Yeah, so with that being said, make sure you like and subscribe and ding that bell for those notifications. Remember, this is museum number two out of five and three different cities. So you wanna be on the loop of things. And make sure you leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. Okay. And with that being said, don't forget to meet new faces. See new places. And always leave a space for love. Bye. Peace. Look at those creepy hands. And here what you got, what you see next to this woman is a handmade high chair with deer skin seat. And then a four octave portable pump organ. <laughs>